In fact, as of this morning, there was a report about the jet uh, wobbling as if um, it's sort of like uh, the the light beam from uh, a lighthouse uh, uh, that is uh, wobbling. And uh, we need to understand. Uh, wh- Avi Loeb just posted an article on Medium that carries tons of information about 3i Atlas, and we're going to explain every part. The big reveal? NASA's Europa Clipper observed 3i Atlas at perihelion, the exact moment when Earth telescopes couldn't see it because the sun was in the way. On November 6, 2025, Clipper captured seven hours of ultraviolet data from 164 million kilometers away, documenting the gas plume, the anti-tail geometry, and chemical signatures while the object was hidden from our view. This isn't just another observation. This is the missing piece from the most critical window. When thermal stress peaks, when jets should be most active, when the object's behavior tells us what it actually is. Loeb confirms this data constrains the anti-tail geometry during perihelion passage, and here's what makes it wild. Clipper was positioned between 3i Atlas and the Sun, giving us a downstream view looking back at both the anti-solar jet and the regular tail, a perspective Earth never gets. Let's break down what Clipper saw and why this matters. Here's the problem with studying comets at perihelion. When an object passes closest to the sun, it disappears from Earth's view for days or weeks. Solar glare blocks ground telescopes. Space telescopes like Hubble can't point that close to the sun without risking damage. You're blind during the exact period you most need data. When solar heating is maximum, when outgassing peaks, when fragmentation happens if it's going to happen. For 3i Atlas, perihelion was October 29th, 2025. We lost visual contact, no Earth-based observations, no Hubble, no direct data from the most important moment, but Europa Clipper, launched October 2024, currently cruising toward Jupiter, happened to be in the right place at the right time. On November 6th, just eight days post-perihelion, Clipper was 164 million kilometers from 3i Atlas with a clear view and the geometry was perfect. 3i Atlas sat between Clipper and the sun. That means Clipper looked sunward at the object, seeing the anti-tail and regular tail from downstream. That's the view that shows structure, extent, coherence. Everything Earth telescopes miss because we're always looking from the side or from behind the tail. Clipper used its Europa ultraviolet spectrograph, an instrument designed to study Jupiter's moon Europa, but perfectly capable of analyzing comets. Seven hours of observation across multiple UV wavelengths. When you stack those wavelengths into a false color composite, different elements and molecules light up based on their spectral fingerprints. What did Clipper detect? Oxygen, hydrogen, dust. That combination tells a clear story. Water molecules, H2O, sublimate from the nucleus as solar heating kicks in. Solar UV radiation breaks water apart into hydrogen and oxygen atoms and ions. Those atoms emit characteristic UV light that the spectrograph picks up. The dust signal means solid. Particles are being lifted off the surface along with the gas. Standard behavior when sublimation pressure overcomes surface gravity. So the chemistry is completely consistent with a water-rich comet. Nothing exotic, nothing anomalous, just ice melting and venting as expected near perihelion. That's actually important data because it rules out certain alternative compositions. If 3i Atlas were made of something weird, pure metals, exotic ices, unusual volatiles, the UV spectrum would look different. This looks like normal comet chemistry. But here's what Loeb emphasizes in his article. This data constrains the anti-tail geometry at perihelion. That downstream sunward view captured both the anti-solar jet pointing toward the sun and the regular tail pointing away, showing their structure and brightness during peak solar wind conditions. The anti-tail has been the central mystery, a jet pointing sunward, persisting for months, extending half a million to one million kilometers against solar wind pressure. Natural jets typically get shredded within thousands of kilometers. 3i Atlas's anti-tail defies that limit consistently across multiple observations. Europa Clipper captured this structure at perihelion, when solar wind is strongest, when dispersion should be maximum, when any natural jet should collapse fastest. If the anti-tail maintained coherence even under those conditions documented by an independent spacecraft from a unique angle that confirms the structure is real and persistent under peak stress, 
Loeb dropped an interesting detail. Three I Atlas will reach Jupiter as early as March 16th, 2026. Europa Clipper won't arrive until April 2030. That's a four-year gap despite Clipper being a dedicated spacecraft with advanced propulsion launched specifically to reach Jupiter. 3i Atlas is moving significantly faster than our best missions. It's traveling at typical interstellar velocities, roughly 30-60 km s relative to the Sun, while Clipper cruises at maybe 10-15 km s. That speed difference is why interstellar objects blow through the solar system so fast and why observation windows are brief. We can't keep up. Loeb said he'd love to board something like 3i Atlas because it would carry him out of the solar system faster than any human spacecraft. That's not just poetry. It's acknowledging we can't match these velocities with current technology. If you wanted to leave the solar system quickly, hitchhiking on an interstellar visitor would be anything we can build. Does Europa Clipper's data prove 3i Atlas is natural? Not by itself. Water, oxygen, hydrogen, dust, all expected for comets but they're also expected for any object that spent millions of years in interstellar space accumulating ice and organics on its surface. A modified asteroid would look chemically identical to a natural comet after that journey. The composition alone doesn't resolve the question. What the data does is add constraints. Any explanation, natural or otherwise, must account for water-dominated chemistry, specific oxygen to hydrogen ratios, dust to gas ratios, and anti-tail structure persisting under maximum solar wind at perihelion. That narrows possibilities. Combine this with everything else, the persistent anti-solar jets defying solar wind for months, the dual pole alignment with 0.00425 probability, the trajectory precision toward Jupiter's hill, sphere at 1 in 26,000 odds, the post-perihelion course correction, each piece fits natural explanations individually, but together they form a pattern requiring compound improbability or suggesting something operating under different rules. We now have coverage from multiple independent sources, ground telescopes documenting persistent jets, Hubble imaging pre and post perihelion, Europa Clipper UV spectroscopy filling the perihelion gap, statistical analysis of geometric alignments, Trajectory data pointing toward gravitationally significant locations. Each observation constrains models. Each data set eliminates some possibilities and reinforces others. The picture emerging is an object that matches natural comet chemistry while exhibiting behavioral and geometric patterns requiring increasingly specific conditions to explain as purely coincidental. Europa Clipper's perihelion data doesn't answer the question definitively but it fills the most critical observation gap we had, confirms the anti-tail structure is real under peak solar conditions, and validates that whatever 3i Atlas is, it's behaving consistently across different observation platforms and viewing geometries. March 2026 is the next major milestone. 3i Atlas reaches Jupiter's hill sphere, that one in 26,000 precision approach Loeb keeps emphasizing. If it deploys anything, if trajectory shifts occur, if new anomalies appear, that's when we'll see them. Until then, every additional data set matters. Europa Clipper gave us perihelion coverage. Hubble and ground telescopes continue tracking evolution. Spectroscopic analysis will measure jet velocities and composition in more detail. The data keeps accumulating. The pattern keeps getting clearer, or stranger depending on how you interpret it and we're watching in real time as an interstellar visitor crosses our solar system faster than anything we can build. Heading toward Jupiter with geometric precision, we can measure but not yet fully explain. What do you think Europa Clipper's data reveals? Does water chemistry settle the question, or does it just add more layers? Drop your take below. Subscribe for updates as we approach March 2026 and share this. Loeb's article deserves the attention. Let's talk about it.